This video is going to cover Dropbox basics for faculty using D2L 10.3, including how the Dropbox works and how to set up Dropboxes in your course. The Dropbox in D2L is a means by which students can submit work directly to their instructor. Generally, you set up one Dropbox for each assignment, and all the students in your course click on the same link to submit their work for that assignment. However, students cannot see the work their peers submit to the Dropbox. They can only see their submissions and your feedback to those submissions. You can create Dropbox folders in two main ways. Either through the new Dropbox link within the course content, or by choosing the Dropbox link from either the Assignments or the Edit Course menu. In this case, I'm going to go through Edit Course and click Dropbox. You can see that in this sample course, I already have three Dropboxes created, and one of them has a total of 17 student files submitted to it. However, if this is your first time setting up a Dropbox, you'll want to start by simply clicking on the New Folder button. Clicking on this button brings up a form with several tabs whereby you can control what your Dropbox is called and how it works. First, you will need to give your folder a name, usually the name of the assignment. This is what students will click on to submit their files. If you want to generate a Turnitin originality report for this Dropbox, check the originality check box, and doing that will create some additional options for us at the bottom of this tab. In the folder type area, you decide whether you want the Dropbox folder to be for individuals or for groups. Most likely you will want to leave the folder individual, meaning students can't see anybody else's submissions. But if course groups are turning in a collective assignment for one grade, you may want to choose the group submission folder option. In the grade item area, this is where if you want to tie the Dropbox to a gradebook column, you can do so, either by selecting the column if you have one pre-existing from the drop-down menu, or clicking the new grade item link. If you click on that link, you'll create the gradebook column right here within the Dropbox area, and then when you're done, you can give the Dropbox the amount of points possible here in the out of box. This instructions area is where you will provide directions for your students for this Dropbox assignment. You have all the functionality of the HTML editor here within the instructions area, so you can add videos or images if you wish, and you can also add a file for your students to see by using the Add a File button. The next section is Submission Options, and here's where you can tailor how the Dropbox functions. Files allowed per submission controls how many files the students can actually submit to this Dropbox, either one or unlimited, meaning as many as they choose. The Submissions area controls how many files you, the instructor, will actually see. By default, all submissions are kept in the Dropbox, and you'll see a list of all of the papers the students submit when you look at the submissions. But you can switch this so that only the most recent submission is kept, meaning when students submit a new file, it will override the previous one, or you can click this button, meaning only one submission is allowed. This originality check options area is what popped up when I clicked on the turn on the turn it in originality check box at the top. If you're going to be using the originality report to provide some students feedback, you'll definitely want to click the show advanced originality checkings options link and turn on some of these options. For example, if you want students to be able to see their originality report, you're going to want to click that this box allows submitters to see originality reports. This area will let you tailor which databases the student submissions are checked against and whether or not other submissions can be checked against that submission. Times you might want to turn this off or if students are submitting multiple drafts of a paper and so you don't want them to come up as having plagiarized something that was already one of their previous submissions. Before we save and close, I also want to point out a few things here on the Restrictions tab. Probably the most common feature you'll want to set here on the Restrictions tab is the due date. This will appear in the Dropbox menu when your students go to submit their files. Due dates also show up in upcoming events if you are using the course calendar. You can also set box open and close dates using the start and end date boxes and create either release conditions or special access for this Dropbox folder if necessary. Once you have all of the settings as you wish, click Save and Close to create your Dropbox folder. Now you can see here I have assignment name as a Dropbox folder. Now I'm going to switch to the student view and show you what the Dropbox I've created looks like from the student's perspective. Okay, now I've switched to a student view and I'm going to show you what those Dropbox folders look like for your students. In this course, the Dropbox is going to be accessed through the Assignments menu, though it's possible that you could have links set up for the Dropbox within the content area if you chose. 
And here you can see I have a list of all of the Dropboxes that this student can submit to. There's a couple that I created previously, and here's the one I created earlier in the video. Notice assignment name. This little icon right there shows that the originality check is enabled for this particular Dropbox. For your students to submit to the Dropbox, all they need to do is click on assignment name, and here's where they'll add their file and submit. When students want to view their previous submissions, they can click here in the submissions column to see files that they've already submitted. And if there was faculty feedback for the Dropbox or due dates specified, those would show up here in these columns.